on. But his tier two is coming up one at a time. It's so easy for the fox to pick off. He's he knows that he's been beat. And that's a rare three nil against Aralu. It's rare that you see it happen, but it was gonna happen. If anyone was gonna do it, it was probably gonna be Mishi. Stream dead. It shouldn't be. Uh, are you fucking with me? Like, the stream's coming up fine on my end. Like, I didn't get any warnings about dropped frames or anything. That's worrying. Um, I mean, it wasn't down for me on my end, and I had people talking just near the end of the last game. Well, that is odd. I mean, do you need me to go through it again? I'm not sure why that would happen. Well, moving on, keep me abreast of the situation. We'll move on to Mishi versus Kin. Kin actually starts with a 1 0 advantage here. Um, okay, I, I have no idea why the stream would go down because my internet has stayed strong. I've had no warnings. I've not. The bitrate hasn't dropped uh, massively. Um, XSplit didn't crash. I got no missed drop frames warnings. The stream that I have up to compare was going fine. No week one games. Uh, no, Nicolaccio did those. Oh, wait. He didn't do the Aralu versus Mishi, did he? He didn't do the week one Aralu versus Mishi. Hang on, hang on. Oh, that's a big goof. Okay, so I guess we're going to watch the prequel of the series we just watched like that's if the game if my computer will cooperate with me and let me copy the files over I don't want to buy Winra stop asking it's too hard to say Winra too many <coughs> Why is this not working? Of 
copy. Paste. Finally. Alright. Sorry, Kin, you'll have to wait a second. And this was week one, so it's no pigeons and no skunks. All right. Let's see if things are different this time. So we got Squirrel Mole, Falcon, Cam, Snake Wolf against Squirrel Toad, Falcon, Cam, Fox, Artie. Uh, maybe Aralu is one of those players that is just super used to having moles and has been nerfed without them. You can see him doing a mole rush here. He does manage to force a sell for the cost of only five food. Look, I'm sure there's some examples where the prequel's better than the sequel. Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul's a prequel to Breaking Bad. But it's way better. Um, uh, presumably there are other examples. I can't think of them at the moment, but I'm sure they exist. Um... The Phantom Menace? <laughs> no, no. I think Bro Better Call Saul is way better than Breaking Bad. Um, wasn't The Godfather 2 a prequel? I never actually watched any of the Godfather movies. So I don't know. But I think Godfather 2 is a sequel. Is a prequel. A prequel sequel. Um, Mask of the Phantasm. Was a prequel to the Batman animated series. And that was really good. That was also the first movie so... I don't know if it counts. Okay, well, Aralu, we'll put that debate on hold because Aralu is coming in with a mole push that Mishi hasn't scouted and he's trying to go for more farms as well as selling down an army to get cams up. Which means Aralu has got the perfect opportunity to cause some real havoc. Okay, Mishi sells the chameleon one and just goes for mass squirrel with a sprinkle of toad. And Aralu decides to sell his moles and return home to put down a wolf. Which Mishi probably won't see. <sighs> now... Mishi saw four farms here, so he knows that there's enough food for there to be a tier 3, but that could just as easily have been spent on, you know, tier 2, or on a ninja base somewhere. So, he he can't guarantee that a tier 3 is coming. He's not really getting enough information with these scouts. Because he's just running around here on the edge to keep his commander alive. He needs to really run in and get a good look. But he is going to be ahead on farms at the very least. He's getting out his own four chameleons. Um, six toads I don't think is going to do too much against 
four chameleons. Uh, three is going to do even even less. But he's selling them with a purpose. He's going to get his own fox out. His tier three. And we've seen how devastating the fox can be. But this time, Aralu is going to have the wolf to deal with it. He's going to be able to catch up to the fox. And he's going to have the tier 3 first. He is so far ahead on army value right now. If Aralu were to just attack, surely there'd be no way Mishi could hold. Mishi just spamming chameleons. I wonder what the logic is here with the cam spam. Mainly just chameleons are really tough when they when you get out loads of them. They scale pretty well, chameleons. Um, maybe better than anything else. Well, I think maybe ten falcons is not as good, as, not as difficult to deal with as ten chameleons, but it depends how much you've got that can shoot up. A lot of toads do go down, but still a fair number get in to blow up, and. Aralu's uh, chameleons are just goners. He's still got this wolf buff tier 1, which shouldn't be underestimated. But he is getting forced back. The wolf is just ahead of Mishi's army. And now here comes the fox. But it doesn't have a lot of support, and if it starts retreating, there's a decent chance it gets caught out. Wolf buff snakes are very good at focusing down expensive units like this. Oh, but the fox is taking a hit. Aaron needs to be very careful now. Cannot afford to lose this wolf. Okay, Aralu is pushing. He's getting some good damage here. Even with the fox doing its sniping business. Uh, oh, the wolf goes down. Did Mishi focus fire that? Or does the fox focus the highest tiered unit? Because there were so many other units in the way. I think Mishi focused that. Okay, Avalu might have got enough damage done anyway. He got two farms down. But there are... Due to following, he's actually even. Or at least was. Now he's actually substantially ahead. But a fox, if well microed enough, can overcome a very large deficit. Okay, but here comes the chameleons and just not going to catch up. Only get in one or two swings. Okay, Mishi's going to go back, sell off the toads. He doesn't really have the money to afford to blow up half his army. Every, every engagement. <clears throat> He needs really cost efficient units. So he, he needs units that can kill multiple units like this fox. Um, he put down a second one which was presumably a misclick. But he spent a slightly worryingly long time standing over it. Which means I'm not sure he was going to sell it. Aralu with the snake ambush. Nearly getting the fox. If one more poison stack had got on the fox, it would have been slowed down enough where the snakes would have been able to catch it and stick another poison tag on. Okay. Mishi doing his best to stay even on economy. If he can just stay close enough on economy where he can keep on supporting this fox with units then he can claw his way back into this. Fox is very good when you're just a little bit behind. When an engagement like this is still going to be a pretty fair trade. Oh, but this fo the fox is dying, I think. It takes two poison tags, and the poison tags were staggered. 
which means they don't run out in time. And now Aralu is pushing back in, taking these two farms again. And Aralu gets his first point. All right. Squirrel, mole, falcon, cam, snake, wolf against squirrel, toad, mole, chameleon, fox, artillery. My nose is so bunged up and I have no idea why. All right, Mole's coming out from both players. The offensive Mole and the defensive Mole. The defensive Mole should win, but Mishi's gonna try and push through it just onto this pig. But with the Mole there, the pig damage is enough to, you know, kill it. Amalu probably could have afforded to wait, sell that Mole for the full value, but he just wanted to queue up the farm quicker. Would have Artie on the hill being viable? Um, probably. Depends on the time. I don't know if there was a time where Mishi was far enough ahead in army to actually put down the artillery. I think he did try and put down the Artie once, but he got pushed over. Or maybe that was the last game. But yeah, Aralu was ahead for most of the game there, and it's hard to get an arty out when you're behind. If you get it out while you are behind, it can really leapfrog you up several positions, but that's a it's a fairly big if because it's such a big investment for no immediate payoff. Okay, both players ecoing up pretty heavily. This has been the way of all the games so far. Yeah, RT definitely needs support with it. It's good, but it can't fight it. It can fight small armies by itself, but can't do more than that. Why is Mishi at three points? I guess I just never took him down. Why do I keep getting notifications about people? I know I'm streaming. You've told me three times. I need to mute that phone while I'm streaming. It goes off. It's such an annoying tone. In fact, why don't I do that now, as Aralu makes this mole push happen? Because I need to commentate now. I'll do it after the mole push. All with one hand if I'm able. Okay, Aralu moving through the water to try and find an angle. It's a bit risky, but he does get in while Mishi's army is slightly out of position. Mishi has more chameleons to work with. But they are all dead. Aralu is going to have to retreat though. But he does have these forward warrants to sell. And for the quick reinforcements. Can he get run over? He's floating a lot of food at the moment. Which means uh, there's a lot of wasted army. It looks like the roll over is beginning to happen. But now... The chameleon is out for Aralu. Aralu's still floating hundreds of food. 
He's holding on. I don't think he knows whether or not he can hold on. Like, he's kind of caught between doing the I need to scout what my opponent had surrender and running back to put down units. Eventually, he decides to run back and put down units. But can he hold now? Again? Question I've been asking for last 20 seconds. He's trying to get out some extra cams. Finally, Aralu has spent all his food, but he's not spent it well. There's just so much health to go through with four chameleons and 12 moles. Mishi's deck is just so tanky. I thought um, Aralu got this pig on the corner, but unless Mishi rebuilt it instantly, I guess he hadn't. Yeah, looks like he didn't. Aralu took a big loss there, and he might take another one because Mishi wants to come in and Aralu has sold all his moles. Four chameleons is just too hard to deal with unless you've got your own four or something else that can, you know, fight. When you're behind in tier two, the most chameleons tends to win. <sighs> All right. So no, no revenge sweep. Unfortunately for Aralu. Although it would have been preemptive revenge. Okay, squirrel mole, falcon, cam, snake wolf against squirrel toad, mole, cam, fox, arty. Same decks from both players. Mishi putting that mole down a bit too close within the pig range and having to go back. Mishi's been trying to do a couple of mole pushes here, but nothing's worked so far. I'm just going to turn this fan a bit over. I'm very hot. Okay, both players expanding. Arrowly being a slightly greedier one. Launches a little probing expedition. Oh, and Aralu goes for a third farm. Always dangerous against a squirrel mole push. But Mishi has not been on top of his scouting so far. And these pigs are all going to, well, mostly going to come up by the time he actually sees them. Aralu's got time to put his own moles down. There will be some out by the time Mishi gets here. This cabin isn't actually going to pick anything off, but it could have. Could have at least got a shine. Mishi realizes that he's missed his opportunity to attack and retreats. And just to eco up himself. But now Aralu's thinking of moving in. He did start ahead and he knows that Mishi has spent food or is, is likely to have spent food on farms. He does start the attack but burrows back.
He gets back in time to Micro's units though and is able to take a win. He's putting more and more moles down. He's going up to 18 moles. He's gonna probably get this farm. I mean, Aralu can come back a happy boy. But once again, he's got to worry about the counter-attack. This is how he lost the last game. He's floating a lot of food again. It will mean he can reinforce very quickly, but since he's all tier 1 warrens, he should have be able to do that anyway. But this time, he's better prepared. He is able to force Mishi back. And it's not gone for a tier 3 yet. Which is strange. Uh, instead, going for double cams. I would have thought he'd saw he would have sold a mole warren and just gone straight into wolf. But he's trying to to take up a bit slower, learning from Mishi the power of the four cam. I'm yawning so much. I apologize. I uh I'm not used to being sleepy at midnight. I'm one of those people who usually goes to bed at four, but Oh dear. Enough about my sleep pattern. Mishi's coming in and picking off a nice quick farm. Can all these moles chunk their way through the chameleons? It looks like they can, even under the pig fire. And that's another pig going down, another building pig going down. That does even up the economies, but hmm, no buts, that was just good. Uh, don't encourage my alcoholism, Mochaccino. No, seriously, last night ruined me. Oh, here we go. This attack is going pretty well for Aralu. He's got his own moles this time with the cams to back him up. He gets his own three farms. He might get the mill. He's critting through it pretty quickly. And Mishi doesn't even stick around long enough to find out. Aralu going up to 2-1. Did I sleep well? Yes and no. Like, I got to sleep about as soon as I hit the pillow. But, I woke up around... When I woke up, I was still exhausted. But I had such a painful headache that I could not get to sleep. So, it's another day where I've woken up quite early and I'm going to be going to bed quite late. me she needed the RT. I mean RT wouldn't be bad RT might come out to play this game um, with all this water if Mishi were to I mean the problem with the RT here is that this terrain is so open that Aralu could basically just walk around the RT Maybe you should put it on the middle there. It could cover enough. They do have pretty long range. And it's not really viable for Aralu to walk all the way out here into the cabin. Um, because that just lets Mishi attack into his flanks. I haven't really looked at the maps so far. Um... At the time I normally do it, both players are just mauling each other. But this map is definitely Mishi favoured. He's got the four mills on his side, as opposed to Aralu's three. I think we could see an Artie on this map. It's not unreasonable. Okay, 
Okay, Mishi not in the right position to hold off this attack. Narulu is going to take a pig for basically nothing. Only losing a mold. Oh, but he doesn't sell the Warren. Alright, Mishi actually is going to pick up some counter value. Like, if you put the RT over here in the middle, then it stops Aralu from walking around here. And that forces him to attack through this really bad position. And even then, that's probably going to be in at least partly in range of the RT. Uh, this was this is a week one game, so it's got the week one bans. All right, Mishi playing pretty greedy, which is very risky against moles. Here comes Aralu with a numerically superior army. He's going to pick off this pig for the second time, but he's probably going to get more than that. There goes pig two and pig three. Alright. I mean, she stays even on economy since he was so greedy. But that's still a nice pickup by Aralu. Mishi is very greedy, and a player like Aralu is very good at punishing greed. When we saw Mishi play Aralu in the week two games, he didn't play quite so greedy. He attacked first and then greeted. Or he at least threatened to, which kept the opponent in a in check. <laughs> okay, chameleons, chameleons, chameleons. And a couple of toads. Aralu's got his third base starting up. Mishi is falling slightly behind. Which he's not going to be happy with. But is he going to put down a fox? He is. I wonder if he can hold that. This is a bit of a tough map for fox because of the water. Um, good chance it gets slowed down. And there's also not a lot of different angles for the fox to come in. The fox basically needs to come in through here. So if Aralu just holds his army, he can cut it off. Alright, the fox is building. Aralu never scouted it. And has not got his own tier 3 out. He's just going for mass tier 1. Which might be good enough. Mass squirrel is a pretty viable answer to a fox. Um, 12 toads might get some really big hits though. But they can't hit the chameleons and the moles. Or maybe they can. Those are some pretty big toad hits. Were they big enough? Looks like the answer is no. Oh, maybe. The fox comes out now. These reinforcements are getting cleaned up. Two farms went down, but the two farms were basically empty anyway. They were about to fallow out. Mishi has this base up to five farms already. Which I didn't even notice. When the hell did he do that? And how did Aralu never scout it?
But now, Avenue in a rough spot. Not that rough, he's still got a decent army. And he's got decent fox counters with just a sheer weight of tier 1. But these toads are really getting value, although sending 9 toads into 1 chameleon is actually a pretty good trade from the chameleon's perspective. Alright, maybe Aralu has enough to just focus the mill instead. It looks like that's what he's doing. And Mishi's suddenly not looking so rich. Mass Squirrel. The tried and tested. Does have to run away from the chameleons though. And every time Aralu has to retreat, he loses about half a dozen units at least, just to the fox. It also gives Mishi a chance to get some real counter damage done. But, oh, that fox just gets picked off. And Mishi is not going to try and fight out the rest of it. That fox was his lifeline. And Aralu, it's not quite a 3-0, but it's pretty damn close. Alright. And now we go to Kin Replica versus Mishi. <laughs> so Aralu has regained his honor by killing Mishi, almost as bad as Mishi killed him. Let's see if the owls can get a win as well. Squirrel, lizard, well I say as well, um, in this week it would be instead. Regained honor he lost in the future. Yes, it's like <sighs> honor in advance. It's like a loan of honor. And he had to pay back. Okay. Squirrel lizard, skunk, snake, owl, machine gun against squirrel lizard, ferret, skunk, fox, machine gun. I mean, Aralu was definitely a lot weaker without his moles. I think a lot of players are. Um, players who use the moles a lot don't really know what to do without them. They have forgotten the old ways. The ways before the moles. Oh, I think, I think we should just ban moles every week. Like, I was tempted to ban snakes, but I think banning moles is so much more helpful. And so much more fun. <laughs> but enough about that. Enough about my hatred for moles. Um, let's get on with the game. It's a tough map for Kin. He's only got these two bases to work with. Mishi has one, two, three, four, and a campfire. Um, these two campfires don't really go to anyone, but they, they're more likely to go to Mishi. If Kin can just machine gun up here and put down some owls, you can get quite a lot of owls up out of two bases, but the problem with that strategy is it's going to it's going to fall against Mishi's siege. Mishi's ferrets will blow up any attempt to turtle. Ok, 
Okay, so Mishi creeping forward. He's got his turret set up. Basically gives him free reign of the map. He could even take this campfire and move these up further. Which he might actually do. He is making an effort to destroy this campfire. Yep, he's taking it. And I don't know if Kin can do anything about this. But he is going straight for the owls. This is, this is progressing exactly as I foresaw. Here come the ferrets. And further machine guns, yep. Machine guns creeping ever further forward. And now this is just such a perfect place for ferrets. It's so hard for Kin to push out of this. And these forward warrants are just going to be easy picking. Kin basically just needs to let them die. And try and ferret dance until he can get out his his owls. The owls are coming close. Amishi is going up to six skunks. He's also put his fox warren very far forward. Might get exposed. 27 squirrels coming out for Kin. Holy crud. All right, here we go. One machine gun down. Every little bit of food Kin can get here is a big deal. But he needs to push in in waves. And he needs to get more snakes out instead. Snakes or lizards, I think going for this many tier one when you're against six skunks is insane. Doing it against four skunks would be um, incorrect, but this is just ludicrous. The owls do help. The skunks put a lot of gas down on the mice, which doesn't hit some of the squirrels. Unfortunately, with this many skunks, the gas sort of spreads out far back enough that the squirrels do get hit. The fox is coming up. Kin doesn't have a lot longer to break through this. Although maybe he'll be able... It's going to get a lot harder once this fox gets out. He is steadily... He's pushing a bit further in each time. But here's the fox. Mishi resetting. Mishi's got a huge eco advantage. He can take a lot of these losses. Even though Kin's getting a lot of free units, he's also losing a lot of squirrels each get each attack. And he actually surrenders. Hmm. Huh. I think that was preemptive, but I always say that. I mean He just didn't see a way out. But I think you should definitely play it out. Alright, that's game one for Mishi. Kin bringing in the falcons instead of the snakes. Mishi sticking with the same deck. Yeah, I mean, owls get you, give you so much longevity. What he really needed was more. He needed more owls and more tier two. He just needed to sell some tier one because so much of that tier one was dying for nothing. And he. The thing is, with owls, you only need one win, 
and then you just completely snowball. Mishi was so hard committed to that forward position. He had so many machine guns there, he had his warrens there, he had the campfire. After that, it was a, it was empty ground to his mill. Like, you could have, if you'd pushed, if you'd broken him there, I don't think Mishi would have been able to recover. All right. Oh dear. Enough about last game. Look at this game. Mishi has gone for a quick expansion while Kin has gone for a three farm. Lizard rush. He needs to get some he needs to get at least two farms here. But he's got them. Okay, he's got a third. He's losing some. He loses a lot of lizards there, but he got he got some value. He can get he can go for more when you're playing this aggressive I think it's a mistake to let up like this I'm not the best aggressive player in the world but you want to really keep the pressure on he's gonna take a couple of shots to these because of this campfire but this does open up a new path this is actually a very strong lizard map he's gonna come in anyway even though Mishi knows he does get a pig he forces us out. He actually just suicides and gets all three. Although two of them were sold. For less value, but they were sold. Okay. Okay, if Kin keeps this up, he might get a win. Okay, that's another pig. Like, Kin can afford these losses. Well, kind of. Mishi is being so greedy. He's actually ahead on farms right now. But look at this. Going down to three squirrels. He's really relying on these machine guns. One pig at a time. Going down. Like, I think Kin could probably just push now, but it's hard to call to make, especially with these two machines. You can't underestimate machine guns. They're pretty tough. They get a lot of value. Mishi actually trying to tech swap into his own lizards. Kin has managed to get ahead on Eco, which you'd expect. He's got an expansion with a decent number of farms on it. Oh, he's going even harder. I mean, this makes perfect sense. He's got the lead. Why not? And he's actually... I mean, yeah, he will be ahead because he's got these farms here, but Mishi's fully saturated here, so when we get to the five minute mark, minute mark things will even out. Kin could honestly just go straight up to an owl here. He's going for skunks because he sees that Mishi only has tier 1. That is how owls work. You just overwhelm them with sheer numbers. But once you overwhelm them once, because the mice, like the mice don't have any reinforcement distance, most units would have to run all the way from their warrens over here, get slowed down by the water, run up, and then they'd be back in the fight. Mice just instantly are back, back, back. They spawn on the fight and even though it's one at a time and it's not instant, they they still get there so much quicker than any other unit. Now, I don't think their spawn time is even 10 seconds like a regular tier 1 is. I think it's less than that. I'm confident it's less than that. 
so you can just keep the pressure on which means it's really hard for your enemy to recover how much is this game? not a lot okay Kin's got a way bigger army now he's got the counters to these, to these lizards and to these skunks it's gonna come down to micro here but it's gonna take a lot of micro for Mishi to win this and Kin is even taking this base so he can't get base raced and it's gonna give him extra territory the lizards suicide in, they get most of the falcons and they're gonna get most of the skunks as well but Kin can afford these losses better than Mishi can at this point okay Mishi does survive he loses a mill though, but he does survive, and he's getting a fox out again. It's pretty impressive me she survived that. Kin's... I don't think Kin has seen the fox. He hasn't seen the war, and he might have seen the actual unit. I don't... I don't know what he saw there. But with Mass Lizard, he could push through onto the Fox. He's got answers. But those answers are getting holed up by Mishi's even bigger Lizard Ball. Fortunately, Ken has Machine Gun, so he's got something to hide behind while he regroups. But sell the Falcons here. I really think you should sell the Falcons against Mass Lizard and Fox. They're not going to do much. Burns. Hmm. I think Kin really just wants more Lizards. Or, I mean, you could sell a Falcon Warren and put down an Owl. Like, an Owl is so good against a Fox. What's the owl limit? Um, I don't know. Is it like 8 to 10 mice? Per owl? Something like that. I think it's 10. That m might be a bit too high. Oh, you can have as many owls as you can pay for. It's one per warren. Like, the way this game works is you have these tier 1 warrens here, which are the small ones. They give you 3 units per warren. You have uh, these medium sized tier 2 warrens that give you 2 units per warren. And then you have these really big tier 3 warrens that give you 1 unit per warren. But there's no limit on how many of each warren you can have. So you can put down... You could put down 50 um, tier 3 warrens. And you could get 50 tier 3 units. It would just cost a ridiculous amount. It would cost... 3,600... It would cost 18,000 food. This is very much an underrated game. Criminally so. But... We do what we can to spread the word. All right, now Kin moving in with his mass lizard comp, but he's moving in into a tough, tough spot with all these machine guns down and quite a few skunks. Six skunks Mishi has. Well, he only has one right now. He is supply blocked. Luckily for Kin, he's got the better map for this sort of thing. He's got the high ground. He's got the extra mail and he's got the campfire. These ferrets will mitigate this somewhat, but Mishi has no easy high ground. He has to go up there and expose his commander, which he doesn't want to do. His commander gets gunned down, which can happen very easily with the machine guns, the falcons and the lizards. Uh, his army could be in a lot of trouble. But Kin really needs to be just microing his 
skunks at the front so that these ferret shots don't hit the machine guns. He is finally going for an owl. Do I have a beard? Uh, yes and no. It's not a good beard. It's a I can't be fucked to shave beard. It's kind of a goatee. Just sort of naturally spawns like that. At least I think that's what a goatee looks like. I might be calling it the wrong thing. Okay, Kin's owl is supply blocked, but he should get it up. He's got enough farms. But he's constantly losing 20 food to these um, these ferrets. It's nearly there. He needs to he needs to save up for this owl. He needs this owl out. The owl is such a big deal and oh this is clever by Mishi. You getting the high ground vision with his commander, but he does leave his army a bit exposed. 773. There the owl is finally paid for. But that like tripled the or doubled the time the owl needed to come out. Yeah, they are playing quite patiently. Mishi is now having to expand here because this base is going to start fallowing soon. All of these farms went up at once because that's how Mishi expands. And oh dear, does Kin not see this? I mean, he sees it now. Is he going to go for a base race or attack? Either one is a viable option here. But he's attacking. I think this is the right choice. He is uh, ahead in army without the machine guns. And here comes the owl. The fox is now cornered. It cannot escape. But Kin lets off. He needs to go back. He's losing all his warrens. He's lost all his lizard warrens. He can't reinforce. He needs to rebuild them. But he's got the owl. That should be good enough to keep this army under pressure. Don't let it leave for free. But don't bring your owl this far forward. It could get picked off. Okay, just now get this mill. And Mishi has no way to avoid starvation. Well, he has this mill. Technically. And he has this campfire. But it's going to be pretty difficult. And once you're in starvation, you end up in this spot where you have to keep selling more and more food. More and more warrens to put up these farms, which means your army just shrinks exponentially. The campfire is a cross between a mill and a farm. It works like a farm in that it gives you food at the normal rate. But it works like a mill in that um, if you have a campfire up, it counts as a base so you don't die. Like if you lose all your mills but you have a campfire up, you'll still be alive. And that sometimes does come into play for starvation games and base races. Uh, it gives you five minutes worth of income, the same as a farm, which I think amounts to 300 food, 360, something like that. Okay, Kin, you started with one game. So if he can win a wrong set. So if he can win one more game, he'll actually take the set. Yeah, 300 food. Okay, I was right. All right, here we go. Squirrel lizard, falcon skunk, owl machine gun against squirrel pigeon, falcon skunk, fox machine gun. Mishi bringing in the pigeons instead of the lizards. Um, I'm not sure why particularly um, they do actually pigeons do help out against the owl because the owl its advantage is giving you lots of free units so 
usually you'll kill the mice but you'll lose like a squirrel maybe a skunk while doing that and that 80 60 food will add up over time and that's how you eventually lose if you have the pigeons then you can clear up the mice without losing any units because they're keeping your units healthy and that way you never actually fall victim to the owls you know steady grind yeah they they help with the battle of attrition they'll also help counter the skunks somewhat because it's the same idea the steady damage over time gets very heavily mitigated by the pigeon healing all right so both players expanding Mishi has a fairly nice base two close mills but so does Kin base here base here this base is pretty far out of the way for either player if anyone gets it it's probably Kin simply because he's got the lizards which means he can cover more ground and so he should have map control and this base is again I mean this could go this is equal distance but it's it's so close to either mill that if anyone gets this they've probably already won the game okay Mishi being really greedy here going for eight farms and skunks like Kin could push in with just these squirrels and still pick off a farm but he's not he's playing a bit passive something that a lot of the newer players do is that they play too passive they don't punish when they could they think okay I'll just get further ahead but sometimes it's better to when you're ahead get further ahead is a good rule of thumb but sometimes it should be when you're ahead put your opponent behind because playing like this does give your opponent a chance to come back now it's not a massive advantage Ken had, he only had three squirrels but he probably would have been able to cross the water and pick off this maybe this warren that was building and then a couple of, and then a pig perhaps oh no if he had lizards he definitely could have got something done but with all this water and the quite long distance um, like this doesn't look too far but when you bear in mind that the squirrels have to walk all the way around this corner um, it's actually quite a lot of time so maybe he wouldn't have been able to do anything but he probably should have at least tried all right Mishi taking this forward expansion probably just for tanking purposes or maybe he really does want it but this skunk push is being devastating. Uh, Kin needs to pull back out of the skunk gas. He loses a farm to it. And these skunk, these pigeons are doing what they can to, like I said, mitigate this poison. Alright, here we go. The machine gun set up. Both players are just going to set up a no man's land. We've got a World War One style game coming in, but Kin got the machine guns up first, and he has a high ground, which gives him a pretty major advantage. Although the high ground is neutralized by the pigeons. I mean, mostly neutralized. The lizards are also very helpful for Kin. Um, they're good at chasing down tier two units like the skunks. But Mishi's just micring them very well, pulling them back and making sure the lizards don't get a nice opportunity. Four, four skunks is the point where lizards don't really become any better than squirrels. But having both means that um, it's hard. It can be a bit difficult for skunks to hit everything. And of course, the falcons can't be hit at all. This 
Where this skunk on such low health. Oh, it does die. Stray bit of gas cloud gets it. Is Kim going to go for an owl or for more economy? More economy. I think either is viable here. Although, I'd like to see him go for even more. Like, sell something. Sell a tier 1 warren. Sell, like, this squirrel warren. And put down a lot, as many farms as he can. Shore up his defences with an extra machine gun. Okay, so Mishi has taken this base for territory. He's now taking this base. And, yeah, this is what Kin, I would have liked to see from Kin. He's not far off, though. He is going up to four farms. But Mishi's up to six. Looked like Kin lost a machine gun there. Just to not being there to tell his army to defend it. Alright, so this is better. Here we go. Fully saturated base. And Kin did scout this, so that's good. He's not going to expect Mishi to be starving anytime soon. Army's pretty even. Kin can honestly think about taking this mill as well. It looks like he wants to just get a run around with his lizards. This does... He has to worry about a bit of an attack here. But he's getting some damage done. Although a lot of these pigs he's killing would be about to fallow anyway. There's still pigs. There's still food. But Mishi is now walking all the way around. And there's no machine guns here. The kin's making an effort to make sh some. Okay. Kin's got all the squirrels. Which means these falcons can't be damaged anymore. Chase down these lizards. Oh my god. Two skunks getting away at 1 HP. Oh that's painful. I would have loved to see Kin chase them down. It can get, it can be a bit of a trap though, chasing down low health units. Like you get baited into their reinforcements, but man, two skunks at one HP that the pigeons are going to heal up. Like that's a massive pigeon value. And oh, Mishi's coming through. It looks like Kin wants to go for a base race. No, he's not. He's just He doesn't have enough lizards to go for a base race. He's just picking off farms. But he needs to be with his army. He's losing so many warrens. Okay, this actually works out well, though. The skunks putting gas down on both sides is pretty strong. But not having any lizards is a big deal. coming back in. He's got a much higher army now. Although Kin is... Ah oh no, Kin isn't able to get the Falcons. And that's going to be game three for Mishi. Okay, we're going to game five. Can Kin do it? Can Kin make the upset happen? The upset that everybody wants to see. Oh, that's not... That's not the game. Hold on. Did I miss a point? Okay, that's the game we just had. Right? No. No, it's not. Okay. Well, luckily that's not a spoiler, because this would be the last game either way. 
Um, I just got sent five games, I think, probably out of habit. All right. Okay. So, Pigeon's coming out for Kin as well this time. That makes sense. He has been suffering a lot because of the skunk gas. The lizards weren't able to really compensate for that. Because lizards are good against skunks, but Mishi was just getting four of them. Alright. This is interesting. I don't think this works for Kin. But he cannot reinforce this base at all. He has to... Oh, well, I guess he can just build his warrant here. Oh, Mishi sells the mill. So he's going to be head on army. Uh, Kin probably needs to put down a machine gun. Probably needs to... Yeah, there we go. Okay, this is suddenly this is a very interesting start Kin doing a bit of machine gun creeping he could move a bit further forward but like ideally he wants to get these machine guns in range of this mill Unfortunately, he does lose that, but he gets all the squirrels. If Kin micros this right, he could really leverage this. He needs to focus fire the squirrels before they reinforce. He's focusing too much on the mill. And now the chameleon is out. He should be able to gun it down. Okay, he gets the mill. It's a pretty big deal. It means he can continue this um, this machine gun push. One chameleon is not that strong. It's not able to carry the army. Kin needs to get behind this machine gun and reinforce. Now he's actually got a machine gun in Mishi's territory. Is he going to be out? He doesn't have enough squirrels though to hold this position. And now, Kin Mishi is finally up to two chameleons. But without machine guns, Kin is not going to be able to hold. Those chameleons did freak out. Those chameleons just did not know what to do there. But it looks like it's not going to matter. This king gets pushed back, just getting out squirreled. I think. I don't think he was floating food. But he wasn't focus firing particularly well. That is true. He really had an opportunity um, when he destroyed Mishi's army the first time. If he'd ignored the mill and had just gone to the Warrens, he could have stopped Mishi from being able to rebuild at all. And he could completely have snowballed from there. He, he would have won the game. Uh, but unfortunately, that's just a lack of experience creeping its head in. Like... It's a mistake even like really experienced players make is focusing the mills too much because I mean you win the game by destroying all the mills right so obviously you want to destroy the mills whenever you can but sometimes if you just destroy the other stuff first it doesn't matter how many mills they have you'll be able to destroy them if you destroy the, destroy the things stopping you from destroying mills is basically what I'm trying to say. 
All right, so Mishi unfortunately holds on, and we don't get our we don't get our upset. Uh, okay. Now we've got Rush versus Nicolaccio. Just um, actually, I need to check who's the attacker here. It's Rush, and they should be zero. Okay. And the weight is three eighty four. The colours don't need to change. Okay. Lizard pigeon. Skunk snake badger mine against squirrel lizard skunk cam snake owl. Alright, so pigeon rush repping team badger. So I'm blatantly biased. But also, Nicolaccio repping Team Owl, who everyone needs to lose at the moment because they're far away in the lead. Um, but Nicolaccio went for the six farm double. Pigeon Rush scouted it, but didn't respond particularly quickly. Didn't sell his farms, which means he's going to lose one. It does just bring them even, and he does get at least some lizards. So it's not too bad. But yeah, you don't want to have to spend another 60 food building up the farm. If I was Rush now, I'd put a mine down here and take my lizards around to try and poke at the back here. Um, he is building a lot of lizards. He needs to either do something with them or eco up. He's going to try and go for skunks. So very, he really needs some farms here. He knows that. Nicolaccio is up to eight. Okay, farm mill wise, this is an interesting map because these two mills are right next to each other. So both players are just going to be able, just going to constantly be hitting each other if they take these. But they've also got these far away mills, one apiece. So are you going to expand aggressively or defensively? The choice is up to you. Okay, Pigeon Rush actually holding off this attack. Uh, not spending that 60 food on the farm meant getting these skunks out early works. He needs to be careful he doesn't overextend though. This skunk is going to get chased down by the lizards. Pull the skunk back, pull the skunk back. He doesn't pull the skunk back. was a big miss micro he's going for the mill again the units are more important at this stage if you kill all the units then the mill comes for free but please just pull these skunks back Please, Pigeon Rush, pull the skunk back. Oh, God. He doesn't pull the skunk back. I mean, he's still winning these engagements, but he doesn't want to be losing all this tier 2. Also, please put them in your territory so they heal. Get this last farm. Maybe he doesn't know that he's on seven farms. This is a common mistake where... Um, because that farm is kind of hidden by the mill... If, if you don't check your mini-map, it's pretty easy to forget that you haven't taken it. Alright. He 
he's holding for now but these skunks are not getting a lot of damage done they the two skunks were focus firing on that one lizard man pigeon rush really needs to work on his skunk micro If you've got skunks around um, a base like this, you kind of want to just kite units around it, play ring a ring the rosies, and in general you want to like bring them back so that the units have to walk through the gas. Yeah, you also don't really want to focus skunk. Um, because they're just, you know, they, they, they're the tanks. They want you to focus them so that the other units can kill you. It's not always true, but it's, in these small army comps, it's probably true. If you don't have enough army to, you know, burst down the skunk in a matter of seconds, then you, you're better off just focusing on the rest of the army. Same deal with chameleons. Alright, this is looking like GG. Nikolasio has such a healthy economy compared to Pigeon. And it was such a good start as well. I forgot to update the scores fixed now all right come on pigeon rush we need this changing the color not bad the same deck lizard pigeon skunk snake badger mine now Badger has a good matchup against Al. Um, against the Badger, an Owl is basically a liability. You really don't want one. But the Snakes are a really good counter to the Badger. So this will come down a lot to Micro. With the Lizards and the Pigeons, um, those mitigate the Snakes a lot. As long as the snake's numbers are low. Once they start getting up to four snakes or above, then it becomes very easy to focus fire a badger. Okay, here come the lizards. Pigeon rush did not scout the enemy base and is going to get rushed down again but this time it's going to be even worse because he went to up, up to eight farms instead of just five just six before huh <sighs> i mean he is still ahead on eco but he doesn't have any lizards out yet okay two farms dead is still ahead on eco for what it's worth Okay. He needs to be careful here. He doesn't want to be fighting outside the range of his pigs. And he's actually gone for an expansion, the mad lad. Pigeon Rush is so greedy. Nicolasio is staying on five farms and just put his warren further forward. And here come two farms for Pigeon. This is the wrong place to put a farm as well. It's too far forward. Like, these are the really exposed farms that the lizards can get on easily. You'd want to do those back too, so that the lizards have to come further in. 
but you probably don't want to put down any at all. You, you want to put down more lizard warrens or more mines. <laughs> His commander does give off a strong I don't give a shit vibe. Like the way it just stops moving. It will suddenly take it will move like it'll take two steps and then just stop. Okay, I don't think it's really possible for Pigeon to win from here. So I should probably just fast forward this. Alright. Quick 2 nil for Nicolasio. Let's see if Rush can make the sweep. I really hope Rush can make the sweep. Okay, Lizard Toad, Pigeon, Snake, Badger, Machine Gun, coming out from Pigeon Rush. Now let's see <coughs> if he's prepared for the early push this time, because Niccolo has done it twice in a row. Okay, yeah, he's learned. He's put down an early warren. Although it looks like this time Niccolo isn't going to do it. Or maybe he is. He's putting down his own early warren, but that seems more defensive. Given that it's squirrels instead of lizards, it's a defensive warren. Pigeon Rush is going for the double tier 1 warren. But Niccolo has scouted it so much earlier, and he's not been as greedy as Pigeon Rush was. This is a much better response to early aggression to only go up one farm and then go into Warrens. The general rule of thumb is that one farm ahead of your opponent is safe. Now, Pigeon is able to get a Warren, but Nicolasio should be able to afford that. Um, though he's had a decent minute of having an extra farm. Pigeon's still on five farms. But, hmm. I mean, Nicolasio has got to wait, so if Pigeon Rush doesn't do something in the next minute or so, get some serious damage done, then it looks like Nicolasio will take this. He does get another pig there, but it cost him all his lizards. He needs to take a wider angle. You don't want to attack the farms on the side where your opponent's army is. So, because the squirrels are on this right side, really he wants to be attacking these left farms. Okay, but he's going up to eight farms now. He is going to be a bit behind an army for doing it. Which is always really dangerous when you're playing lizards, because they're not very good defensively. Alright, here comes Pigeon Rush again. The 
This is better. He's attacking from the right side, by which I mean the left side. And that gets him two farms. He's now ahead in eco. But far behind an army. But. He is. He does have enough. Enough lizards to try and force a base race. Although. With only one base that will be very tricky. He does not want to get drawn into a straight fight like this. But that's exactly what he does. And this is looking like it could be a 3-0. Yeah, this is a 3-0. Alright. we got one more set to do. Man, that's disappointing for Badger players. But, it's what it is. Okay, we've got Enamel versus Sir Isaac. The weight is 128. I'm I'm very tired. I'm just tired. Also, it is depressing to see my team lose. All right. Enamel versus Professor Isaac. Can the boars get a win over the evil, evil owls? The colours are actually right, aren't they? Um, okay, so Squirrel Lizard, Falcon Skunk Boar Balloon against Squirrel Falcon Skunk Owl Machine Gun Balloon. Good map for an owl um, with a lot of defences. You can take this mill, set up machine guns on the high ground, then he's got this mill to expand to and this mill to expand to with a campfire in the back. Should be pretty easy for him to uh, eco up hard, turn this into a macro game. Although hopefully we won't get just like five straight super macro games because I would like to go to sleep at some point. It's already half past one. Well, 20 past, but half past sounds better. Okay, so. Enamel did sell for a couple of warrens. Professor did see it. Enamel is trying to run around this machine gun, even though he could probably kill it. He's going to get this pig. But he's going to lose some of his reinforcements, two of his reinforcements, so it's actually a fair trade. It's about 80 food for a farm. That sort of makes it okay. That makes it even. And Isaac is going to try and counter push. Um, not a lot of his squirrels are here. Which means he's actually going to get picked off piecemeal. But three lizards are not going to be able to rush down. Oh, this machine gun. They actually could have, but... Enamel wanted to pull back. He didn't commit. Although he really shouldn't have gone in in the first place. He nearly did get it. So, it's a very back and forth, but Enamel is a farm ahead. Now, this is also a pretty fair map for enamel. He can take this mill. A balloon will neutralize the high ground vision pretty nicely. 
Um, still going to be annoying, but he can do something, especially now that he's in the lead. Um, and then he's got this mill and these two mills to take. These two mills are a bit riskier because Isaac can move in around here or across here. But it's definitely doable. And Enamel can get multiple balls up. Which are not quite as good as multiple hours, but still pretty strong. Balls don't scale incredibly well, but, you know, they're still tier 3 units. Like, a boar is, what, 110 health? It's a lot of health to get through, even once. Doing it twice, that's, that starts to get a bit, a bit difficult. Okay, so both players have managed to get an expansion out with some farms on them. Professor Isaac still hasn't taken this corner farm back. Enamel is attacking through a weird angle, really over the water, and he's focusing down these machine guns, which is... Mm. I mean, there's merit to it, but he could have stayed out of the range of the machine guns easier than out of range of the squirrels. The squirrel, the squirrel doesn't get it. A shame. Come so close. Okay, these are skunks. Um, I was kind of wondering if he was going to go straight boar. <clears throat> he has fallen quite far behind now. The eco for Professor Isaac is going out of control. And this skunk is going to really struggle here because even though it's good against the squirrels, there's so many s machine guns down that the skunk can't do anything to. There is a possibility that what happens is the skunk gasses all of the squirrels and then enamel squirrels can shoot down the machine guns. But there's no guarantee. Although it's much more likely if he gets up to four skunks. I would like to see enamel sell a uh, warren though and put it into farms because he can get that warren back before what the hell he sold both his skunk warrens what a 500 IQ mind game and there goes the boar okay enamel enamels come to play I was, I was just starting to get convinced about the use of the four skunk squirrel combo, but I'm liking the boar. I would have liked it more two minutes ago, but still, I like it. Isaac does have a lot of tier one and the boar's good at getting through buildings. Now we'll still need a way to deal with these skunks though. Now Enamel has also caught up on economy, which is another big deal. I mean, Isaac hasn't scouted this. Isaac is expecting a push. This is actually working out very well for Enamel. This is a great mind game. And Isaac putting 180 food into his owl is going to make this attack even more devastating. Plus, this is 300 food in machine guns. That's not going to contribute anything. They're too far back. The front line is moved up here. These machine guns can't support Isaac anymore. And now I did get the scout on that owl. Now, 
is he going to push in? He does have the bigger army. And 300, remember, 300 of that red line for Isaac isn't going to be contributing anything. That's basically a third. Oh, hello, gentlemen. What are you doing awake? Enamel really needs to attack before this owl comes out. I'm not sure why he's being so hesitant. Oh wait, well, I was looking at income value rather than army value. The army is a lot more even, but still I think uh, Enamel has it. Okay, well the owl is out. Enamel is trying to get up to falcons and a second boar. Isaac has scouted this third base. Now it has scouted the fourth. And the second owl. And now Enamel has moved up his line. But he's still got this line of machine guns back here. Both players are just standing there menacingly third boar coming out for enamel this is getting interesting long but interesting oh is enamel gonna move out looks like it would have thought he'd waited for the third boar but here we go Boars are dying. They've killed all the ground units. There's not enough for Enamel to actually shoot down these owls, but they do get one. Enamel's running away. No, you have the army advantage. You, Your squirrels could... Well, he doesn't, but a lot of the army wasn't actually there. There was basically a couple of squirrels, a half-dead falcon, and an owl on about two health. Like, he definitely sh should have finished that off. Okay, well, we still got another boar building. Enamel is seriously supply blocked though, and Isaac is moving in now. So, it's not looking great, but he has got a surround. He has got the surround. If he picks off this owl, crazier things have happened. But he's kind of focusing the owl too much. You kind of want to focus on the falcons first. The owl, like, can be dealt with afterwards. And here comes the boar explosion. It's on one health. Unfortunately, it doesn't hit air anymore. It used to. There was a time when the boar bomb did hit air units. And uh, that was pretty, pretty broken. Do gas and fire stack on each other? I think they do. Enamel with his 1,000 food and his two squirrel warrens. He's going to try and fight this out, but it's not happening. Oh, and I forgot to reset the score again. take another lead squirrel lizard falcon skunk boar balloon against squirrel falcon skunk owl machine gun balloon Man, I'm looking forward to bed. Oh, God. Whew. So, um, Enamel, 
when he was sending me these games, he told me that he actually quite likes getting feedback on how he's playing. So anyone who has something to offer him, you know, feel free to put it, put it up. I think it was basically what we saw last game that was, well, last night and last game. That he doesn't push when he has the advantage. He lets his opponent build. But these are two of the newer players, so you've got to expect some learning to occur. I remember it wasn't long ago when the likes of Aralu and this guy were making the same sort of mistakes. At least it wasn't long ago in my mind, but I guess it's been like a year since then. Who else was there? I think Trumpet is the latest, scariest new player. But he's apparently not that new. He just never really, I think he just might have not, not competed. Or I might be making that up. Mixing it up with someone else. Okay, so we got squirrels, re-squirrels so far. First expansion coming out for Professor. Isaac. I mean, Isaac has the favoured map here. He can expand up here. Oh, quick boar, which Professor hasn't seen. I was going to say that Enamel would have the favourable map because he has this mill and this mill, and even this mill. Whereas Professor's really just stuck on this. But we got a boar rush. And hmm, if Professor doesn't scout this, this boar should be devastating. But it's not just if this boar gets out, it's, it's if Enamel uses it. But surely he wouldn't rush a boar and not use it. Right? Okay, the boar is building. I mean, if... Isaac ecoed really greedily, maybe, but he hasn't scouted this. Um, he's putting up some defenses, but that means he's not putting up eco, and I don't think four farms is going to be enough to out eco the boar. Skunks and boar is kind of overkill. I would rather see lizards or falcons, but. You know, they're still solid. You think it definitely in an army composition this small, it's worth um, it's not worth taking both because a boar can basically cover all of this. Okay, don't let that board die for nothing. It's gonna die. And Enamel's trying to focus down the mill instead of the pigs or the warren. I think if he pulled that board back, he'd be in a better spot here. We've seen a lot of people die, try, kill themselves trying to kill a mill. But that mill wasn't even particularly close. I mean, four farms did go down, but that still leaves Isaac with double Enamel's economy. And what is... Enamel's still trying to go for the base. He's trying to just rally his squirrels straight through. Alright. 2-0 for Isaac. Come on! Someone needs to get the owls dead. Come on, Enamel. You can do it. 
Okay, he's brought the pigeons out, which is a good start. Pigeons synergize well with the boar. Boar's a very tanky unit. Keeping it alive is can be very annoying. God, I've had too much fucking coke today. Okay, map wise, I mean, it's fairly balanced. Um, if enamel takes this one, or Isaac takes this one, they can set up defenses and shut out the other. Um, but Enamel still has this back base to go to, whereas Isaac is a lot more challenged. He has this base, but it's a pretty easy way for Enamel to get to it, so I don't think that's going to fly. Enamel really needs to take this base quickly and secure it. Though he does have this campfire in the back, which will, you know, be nice. Bit of extra food. Never goes amiss. Oh, but Enamel going for the double squirrel rush. Um, Isaac didn't scout it. But he's had time to get up to eight farms and put down his own two, two warrens. Which means this is a really bad start for the rush. He does get the machine gun. Kills the squirrels. Can he kill the pig? If he kills the pig, he can... Okay, his commander goes down, which means these squirrels are going to die as well, which isn't ideal, but... I mean, Enamel did get 120 food there, at the very least. He also killed some squirrels, so more like 180. He lost 60... 620s, but... That's still a 60 food net gain. He can't do it now, but oh dear, he rallied his units. They're going to walk into a, into death because they're all staggered. Okay, no. Dr. Panics rallies his units back when they were winning. And they things even out. Yeah, front row, the Warrens were also very far back. That did mean that Isaac didn't scout them, but he, if you're rushing, you want them really far forward to lower the distance and therefore the time. Although that has fallen out of favour in this meta because moles are so powerful at punishing forward Warrens. However, there are no moles in this game. There are no moles in this week because they got banned. To the joy of all. Alright. Doctor has the squirrel skunk combo. He could try and push here. Enamel's gonna try and hold with squirrel pigeon, and that's doable. The pigeons really neutralize skunk gas in these low numbers. Low numbers of skunks. Now we're being really greedy. But greed is the right play when you see your opponent turtling. Because this is 180 food put in war in uh, machine guns that enamel is basically just put into, into economy. But Isaac, something we've seen from him is that he puts up defenses and then never sells them. This machine gun could definitely be sold and either put on this farm or on these farms. But we also see that he doesn't seem to rebuild farms, but like you'll you'll make more than 60 food from this. Sometimes it's correct not to build a farm after it's been destroyed. And that's usually when it's got 60 food on it. Uh 
got less than 60 food on it because then you won't profit. Um, this one it's definitely worth building. Um, and it's even got an argument for building it over these fresh farms because this one's in a safer position. It's further back. But, you know, maybe he's just keeping it for a base race. Uh, or starvation, rather. Okay, here he comes. This gas is causing a lot of havoc for Enamel. He needs to step out of it, but he doesn't, and he's going to pay the price. You can't just stand in skunk gas like that. You need to move. There's also a bit of a choke point for Enamel. Like this house on the corner here um, meant that his units couldn't get a full spread. They could get a good spread, but not a full spread. And this is looking like it's going to be a 3 0. I mean, maybe not. Enamel does have the farm advantage still. It could be that Isaac is overextending. And Nemo's losing a lot of warrants here. Okay, you need to move that skunk out of the way. Oh no, I think an ammo definitely could have held there. Um, as the units moved over the water, he was in a good position to skunk gas and falcon them. He does just about survive though. But he's completely supply blocked on all his tier 2. He needs to sell some warrens. But he's still alive. He can still push. He needs to sell something though. But selling the fan, I mean... He should have sold the Falcon Warren. I know it's annoying to sell something that's damaged, but... He lost so much value there. For... Not having... For losing the Falcon Warren, one way or the other, you might as well sell, sell it. Alright, can an ammo do this? Oh, that's a dead skunk. Um, his units aren't quite in machine gun range. Okay, Isaac, he coming up. Again, machine gun back here that's not doing anything. And this time, Enamel gets the better skunk micro. Focusing down Professor Isaacs. Isaac really needs to sell something. He's supply blocked on literally every unit. Like, selling Warrens is such a big part of this game. Because you get full value from it. Sell both of these machine guns here. That's 120 food. Okay. Enamel walks around the machine guns. It's looking like Enamel was going to take a point here. Easy. He's got the pigeons keeping the skunks alive. Reinforcements are walking into the machine guns though. And he can't kill the warrens here. He loses his skunks again. He doesn't have a lot of spare eco to keep on throwing away tier 2. Professor needs to sell something. Like, Professor not selling something is making it so that he has the eco advantage, like, in pr eco disadvantage in practice, even though 
on paper, Enamel should be way behind. He's actually being able to rebuild his units because he's selling his warrens like this. But it might finally stop mattering as Enamel has sold to a Skunk Pigeon, which uh, you can't rely purely on skunks to kill squirrels. They can stay alive in the gas for too long. And this is looking like it's going to be a 3-0 after all. And the owls are just going to come completely sweep the evening. Darn. The rich get richer. The owls need to be stopped. But... I think that's all the games I've got for tonight. We've hit the two hour mark. And I am very sleepy. So I'm going to say good night. Yeah, Isaac, Isaac won. So yeah, I'm going to say good, good night. Um, so if it was a little low energy, it's very late. I will see you tomorrow, or today rather, for the PBC. EU at the very least, hopefully American as well. want to do them before, while well, I've got the time and energy. But we'll see how tired I am. Either way, there'll definitely be something going on tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Have a good night. Toodles.